today's announcements for April 14, 1968. Attention please to the announcements for today, April 14, 1968. Will the following Beatles please take attendance and report who's missing from your table? Acker, Alvino, Ambrosini, and Angaroa. If you're Italian, your name ended in A, began with an A, became a Beatle. Gentlemen, as a reminder, all tuition bills are due by the 30th of the month. Remember, tuition is now $780 a year, not $400 a year. At this time, no further tuition increases are planned. You see what it costs the government? We remind you, seniors, of the following dress code rules here at Fordham Prep. Pants. Pants. No corduroys or peg leg tight pants. Shirts. Your top shirt button must be buttoned at all times, and your tie must be pulled up to meet said button. <laughs> Shoes. Shoes must not be pointing. Beetle boots are strictly forbidden. And above all, if they can't be shined, no exceptions. So may I have a list of today's offenders? 222 days. Okay, I, I, in fact, Bob Angarola. Actually, Bob came tonight because he got a note from his doctor. <laughs> All right, but Bob's being treated for leukemia and he's kicking its ass. Thanks Yay! for coming. All right, Bob. The varsity football team won a resounding Turkey Bowl 19 0 victory over our tribal Xavier High School. Yay! <laughs> the first win over Xavier for the graduating seniors. Will all here who played football in senior year please stand and be acknowledged? Come on, I need to stand up. There you go. Congratulations. Bob okay, was a two letter man at four. Cheerleading and what, Ramkin or something? Athletic Council. Athletic Council, yes. So the noise that you heard, was that them pushing out their chairs or their arthritis kicking out? I wasn't sure. Hey, uh, a special kudo goes to Tom McGuire, who scored his one and only career touchdown at the end of the game to seal the victory. Woo. The pride of Belgium. And it was the first time he got his uniform dirty all year. Oh, because you walked in? Oh. And also, we applaud the memory of our classmate, that game's Matto Trophy winner and third team, CHSA Old City halfback, Louis Cap. Louis Cap is over. Further from the athletic department, practice today for the varsity basketball team has been moved up to 245 so that Coach Sullivan can scream at them for an extra 15 minutes. <laughs> Oh, and also the, athle the athletic department has a few changes for you all, effective with Monday's uh, gym period. Here now is the representative of the athletic department. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Moss. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, 50 years of flesh by in an instant, right? And uh, it's totally a different world now than the world we grew up in. So I just wanted to uh, take you back maybe a little bit to a simpler and a kinder time and to remember specifically three gentlemen who helped nurture us in our career of prep. Starting with Coach John Little, <laughs> who gently guided us our first day of PT and went something like this. <laughs> Listen up! From Embryozini, 
<laughs> to Leah Thierry. I want you to go up to the northwest corner of the gym and split yourselves in half. <laughs> The rest of you are swimming. <laughs> Get undressed, face the wall. We're gonna check for swords. Come on, you all remember that. Don't give me that look. <laughs> or Sam Oshaski shouting words of encouragement to a receiver who just dropped a very catchable ball in practice. As he runs up to him and screams, it should have been a bucket of shit, boy! It should have been a bucket of shit! <laughs> or Joe Fox, on the coldest day of the year, we're standing out there in just our gym shorts and our gym shirt. And Mr. Fox is dressed in his hat, his pipe, his long black coat, collar turned up to the wind, clipboard in hand, and with just two words, he got me through that difficult time. He looked down at me and said, Cold pollution? <laughs> so today, three gentlemen, I raised my beer because in the afternoon, any one of them, it would not have been the same for them. <laughs> On to the other uh, serious announcements. There is a student government sponsored dance next Saturday night in the Ramskeller. The student council is requesting that seniors please bring their high school age sisters in order to look for them. <laughs> this plan is designed to get more girls to show up than we had last month, and only 11 sophomores from Mount St. Ursula decided to come to our dance. <laughs> On to academics. Here now the college related announcements. <laughs> Admission reps from our Jesuit safety school are expected to be on campus next Thursday. However, the only safety school that has signed up so far is, wait for it, Boston College. Remember when that was a safety school? That's sensitive to that. Oh, good. All senior class applicants to Fordham University have been accepted de facto ex officio and post haste into the 1968 fall semester, class of 1972. No meeting necessary, no need to bother with the application. Registration is August 15th, show up with a check. When you feel like it, between now and the end of the school year, wander over to Dealey Hall to fill out some paperwork and tell them Father fits in. By the way, Dealey Hall is the building behind the front where Horgan and Kerrigan walk jugging each afternoon so you can't miss it. We won't miss them either. Also, there will be a 315 meeting tomorrow for all seniors who are interested in becoming a doctor or a lawyer. <laughs> Based on projections and discussions with your college guidance counselor, Father Fitzpatrick, and projecting numbers based on your grade averages, this meeting will have to be held in the campus's largest building, Commodore. <laughs> the remaining dozen or so of us, I mean, the remaining dozen or so seniors not interested, or God forbid not qualified, are invited to meet in the senior room where demonstrations will be held on the proper way to smoke a Marlboro cigarette. <laughs> and also, if the TV's working in the senior room, Three Stooges reruns start at 3.30. <laughs> That concludes today's announcements. So, so here we are 50 years later, reminiscing and laughing with classmates over specific memories we can now share in some cases for the one millionth time. In 64, we started out as the largest class ever admitted to the prep. 275 enrollees in all, and we graduated 218 four years later. Earlier at the Mass in the University Chapel, we prayed, we prayed for our late classmates and for those in our U who have lost family members. Please keep them all in your thoughts and prayers.
Hey, way back in the 60s, we got to the Rose Hill campus riding subway lines like the D train, the 3rd Avenue L. We came on the Conrail train from Westchester to the Fordham Road Station. We came by car over the Whitestone Bridge. We came on foot from surrounding Bronx neighborhoods. And we also rode on the beautiful, but way overcrowded, my favorite, the 12 bus down oh, yeah. Helen Parkway <laughs> on the Fordham Road. Can you squeeze 116 kids into 12 square feet? We came from such diverse places as Manhattan and Manhattan, from Palisades Park and Morris Park, from Jackson Heights and from Washington Heights, from Inwood and from Crestwood. And now, the prep has been pretty lucky to have as its president for the last five years, Father Chris Devra. He's gonna tell us a little bit about how maybe that student body has changed, or maybe it hasn't. So let me tell you a little bit about Father Devra. He'll be finishing his fifth year here at Fordham this July. Since he's been here, the prep has seen significant growth in its endowment. Doubling since his arrival in 2014, it now stands at over 40 million. Father Devron has also initiated an ambitious renovation and expansion of this building. Those of us in the class of 68, consider this the new building? It's almost 50 years old. It's old. The five-year strategic plan called Igniting Our Mission has fi financed the Rowan Athletic Field, the aptly and appropriately named Joe Fox Track, the Commons renovation, a beautiful new lobby, a chapel and student group study area with plans in the works to develop a counseling center and improve faculty and administrative work areas. Prior to Fordham Prep, Father Devron served as the founding president of Christ the King Jesuit High School in Chicago. He was also the founding director of REACH, which stands for Recruiting Excellence in Academics for Catholic High Schools. At Regis High School in Manhattan, like, like you didn't know who he was. Like, yeah. um, Father Devron is also from a suburb of Chicago called Oak Park. Uh, I lived there for about six months. It's to Chicago like Crestwood is to New York City. Very suburban and very nice. Please welcome Father Christopher Devron. Well, we're actually going to rebuild the entire east wing of the building, and we're going to bump it out. We had nearly a thousand students here at the prep. This building was built for 800. We put another floor on the building about 10 years ago for roughly uh, 10 million dollars. But there are further improvements we need to do. You know, if you have a house that's almost 50 years old, you got to you got to keep doing things. So we want to we want to take the physical plan into uh, what I believe is the excellence we see every day with what our teachers teach in the classroom, uh, like you were taught. Um, in terms of our academic success, I want to share with you that over the past five years, Fordham Prep students have attended every Ivy League university and every service academy, as well as 60% are going to the most selective schools, uh, colleges and universities, as rated by, by Barron's. Prep students have received academic scholarships from top private and Jesuit universities, including Georgetown, Holy Cross, Fordham, Fairfield, Loyola, Maryland, Colgate, George Washington, South Carolina, and Union. And thanks to your generosity, 45% of our students receive financial aid in one way or another. We give away almost $5 million every year in financial aid. We need to do that because to pay a teacher's a just wage, living wage in today's economy with the cost of health care and everything else, it is, it, it is a significant uh, expense. And we don't have the Jesuits teaching us as much in the numbers anymore, so we're talking about paying lay people who are raising families in this, in this New York market. Um, the other big change around Fordham Prep is, is global education. So one of the things that we came to an awareness of is we have a global network of Jesuit schools all over the world, and we need to leverage that. So this year, 80 students will be going to uh, Italy, Tanzania, Rwanda, Australia, Ireland, all over the world to study. And, and students from those Jesuit schools are coming to Fordham Prep to the Bronx to study. It's a very exciting development. We have future uh, exchanges in the works in Milan, Guatemala, Bolivia, and Uruguay. And this is the way of the world. We, we need to have our students in a global environment so we continue to do that. In terms of service, services at the heart of what we do, 
Um, this is our 20th year of traveling to Tennessee. We've built so many homes in Tennessee and Appalachia that there's now a street in this town named Fordham Prep Road. That's how we Tennessee. Prep students continue to travel to Ecuador. They've been at the Working Boys Center of Quito, uh, Ecuador, where uh, Father John Halligan, class of 47, is. Freshmen also partake in, in service trips to Camden, New Jersey. And our Thanksgiving food drive, we raised over 41,000 food items for pantries right here in the Bronx. I want to tell you a little bit about the class of 2022, the class that's coming in next year. 25% of that class has a prep legacy, either a grandfather, father, brother, uncle, who attended or attends Fordham Prep. 52% of that class scores in the top 15% in terms of their entrance exam. 40% come to us through our summer program, the HAP program. And then geography has really changed tremendously. 45% of our students are from Westchester. I'm very proud to say that uh, we brought up the Bronx numbers. Nearly 30% of our students are from the Bronx. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll tell you what, the big growth market for us uh, is, is Manhattan. When I came here, we were about 4% Manhattan. We will be almost 20% next year, taking them right out of Xavier's backyard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, so I, I want to share a little bit about uh, athletic ex Not too many from Long Island. We've got to work on Long Island. We've got to work on Jersey. Um, there, are, there are certainly areas of growth. I want to tell you, seeing George Zambetti here and Paul Ambrosini, uh, I want to talk a little bit about athletics because things have really changed in that score. We used to have, uh, as, 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 as recently as, as 15 years ago, we had six teams. Today we have 16. 16 different programs. Paul, you helped us get squash off the ground. Uh, some of the newer sports include squash, lacrosse, uh, crew, we have rowing, uh, lac uh, trying to think, uh, Rugby. bowling. I mean, you name a sport and we have a team. So that's exciting because that helps leverage, certainly you think about squash and you think about some of these other sports that really help us in terms of college recruiting. In fact, 14 seniors have signed collegiate letters of intent to play at schools including Boston College, where our quarterback will go, Georgetown, Navy Academy, Williams, and Wake Forest. Um, so it's a very exciting time to be at Fordham Prep. Certainly technology, the global dimension of education has changed what we do, but what does not change is our commitment to care for the individual, which is what you experience through your teachers here and continues to happen. I want to thank you. I know we don't have enough gold stars to go around this room. A gold star means obviously that you have given it in one way or another this year. I know some of you have gave, given as recently as yesterday. Uh, thank you. The only way we can do what we do is your generosity and that's helping another generation, uh, generations to come of prep young men to receive an education that includes scholarship, faith, and service. I hope you guys have a great evening. Thank you for coming back. Please come back more often. God bless you. Thanks, Father Deborah. So keep up the good work. The kids are great. When, when uh, we ran track here on our senior year, there were seven of us on the track team. We had ragtag units. George Febles has 125 kids that run track. <laughs> and yesterday, one of the seniors won the 800. Or today, won the 800 meters race out. Makes him one of the. It makes him the fastest half mile in New York City. So nice. they're really doing a great job. Okay, so everybody's going to be ready for dinner. Sure. Just give me, I got, indulge me for one quick story. And of course it involves Carmine. <laughs> a couple of years, a couple of years ago, pay attention, Carmine, it's about, okay. A couple of years ago, uh, Carmine, who was a, a lifelong resident of Our Lady of Mount Carmel Parish, you know, right behind us here on Arthur Avenue, in the Arthur Avenue neighborhood, Our Lady of Mount Carmel. <laughs> I saw that move in the Bronx Hill when the kid goes, when the bus goes by the church. So Carmine and I are sitting at lunch and we're reminiscing about what the prep had meant to us those many years ago. I remarked to Carmine that before I entered the prep from my little East Bronx Castle Hill neighborhood, I had never met anybody from Westchester County. So Carmine slowly looks up from his lunch, 
leaned over the plate and said to me with a straight face, Jerry, before I went to Fordham Prep, I had never met anyone who didn't speak Italian. <laughs> <laughs> that great straight face. Okay, it's dinner time. Um, we got about 45 minutes of joy. His father, Dan Gaddy, was currently the alumni chaplain at Fordham University, but the 12 year stint as president of Xavier High School, his alma mater, under his Ooh. belt. And he's also in the Xavier Hall of Fame. Ooh. Oh, oh. Now, you guys got a compound. It's 50 years ago. But before all those good things happened to Father Daddy, he was first a Jesuit scholastic with us at the prep. Clearly his formative year. By the way, scholastic is loosely translated from the Latin word scholastica, meaning only 11 more years to ordination. <laughs> Here's Father Dan with his thoughts on his time with us as a scholastic. Standing here tonight before you, uh, almost literally uh, grateful to Dr. George Zambetti for taking care of my needs uh, over the years. So thank you, George. I did that once. That was enough. That was enough. Uh, I was very moved at the liturgy today. I think a wonderful uh, expression of our faith and our unity. Uh, we're in a season of uh, Easter. It's an hallelujah time, and much to be grateful for. Uh, 50 years goes, goes by relatively quickly when you're looking backwards. Uh, looking ahead, it takes, you know, it's gonna be forever. But looking back, uh, I have a lot of memories of uh, Hughes Hall, certainly, members of, uh, the class of 68, 67, uh, 69. So I was a scholastic from 66 to 69 at the prep. Uh, the first two years, I did a silly thing. I lived in the college dorm. No, one year, one year, the first year. Uh, in Robert's second floor across from the church. The problem was that their schedule and my schedule was terribly different. <laughs> So uh, they'd be rolling in at 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning, and I had an 8 o'clock class or 8 30 class. And they may, may have had a class at 10 or maybe in the afternoon. So after one year, I moved back uh, to Faber Hall. Uh, Use Hall, I was telling some people when we were there earlier, uh, before it was renovated to become uh, Gabelli, uh, I walked through and it had been completely gutted. So it was just rafters, just uh, you know, one whole floor empty, no classrooms, no walls. Uh, but what I remembered, and it was like a flashback, on the first floor, these uh, yellow, painted yellow steel beams. And if you were playing basketball, taking a few shots, you had to watch out for those beams. You were for the classrooms on either side. Now for years and years, those columns must have been covered. They were boxed in and so forth. But as soon as I saw the yellow paint, I could almost, you know, see guys coming out of the classroom. And, you know, lots of lots of good memories. So it's a uh, a time of of reminiscing, I guess, and being grateful. Uh, I coached uh, freshman basketball for two years uh, in the big gym, and it was an enormous court, you know, for these high school kids. I moderated tennis uh, with uh, Mr. Rooney. And uh, I think I did a lot of retreats with a good number of you, probably. And I noticed uh, in one of the reprinted newspapers, I guess over here, 
there's mention of, uh, and I guess it was a first, uh, with Father Bob Heyer, we started a co-ed retreat uh, with girls from the nearby high schools. And I think you all, if you participate in that, <laughs> <laughs> One memory uh, is very, very strong in my mind, the, uh, the group of scholastics at the time. I don't know if you remember, does anyone remember Bill Hanlon? Yeah, Bill. I spoke to him this morning. He, he lives up near Albany. Uh, so we had a nice, a nice chat. Uh, Peter O'Brien, uh, Ral Orsair, Jimmy Fox, uh, Paul McCarran. Harry Reese. Harry Reese. Harry Reese. Right. Now, occasionally, and I guess it was in the spring, and it was in the in the gym, uh, we crazy scholastics got together and uh, were on a different stage over there. And with the help of uh, John Magruso and his music, we uh, we did some uh, rock and roll. Mission night. Thank you, John. Thank you. And our name was the Rejections. How we got that name, I do not know, but it uh, sticks with me. So lots of good memories. Uh, apart from moderating different things uh, in the classroom, I taught religion. And in recent days, uh, I got thinking. What did I teach? What did I teach you? And I'd like to think that it was uh, more than uh, the rules, that it was more than uh, a textbook, that it was more than something in a classroom. And the way uh, I like to think about it is that I took uh, students in Fort of Prep, hopefully some of you as well, uh, to the South Bronx. Uh, to help people clean up their homes and their alleys. And I remember, I don't remember his name, one student uh, from Westchester, uh, after the experience, he said, I didn't know this existed. And I think for two summers, I took people down to Berea, Kentucky. And we worked uh, with the Christian Appalachian Project. I was very happy to hear that, uh, from Father Devron's remarks, that. Fort of Prep has made a very significant impact in Appalachia, uh, literally building a lot of homes uh, down there. So I, uh, I think that, you know, it's more about your lives, not about your knowledge necessarily when it comes to religion. And I guess a basic element would be that it's about serving other people, uh, the example of Jesus, to be available. Be a listener, to be helpful when you can and where you can. And I'm sure, uh, I'm looking out at all of you, and I'm sure that in your own lives, uh, certainly you've had opportunities to do that. So in a sense, I think I, I speak for not only the Jesuit scholastics, but all the Jesuits, all the faculty that were there at the time, uh, to be grateful that we had the opportunity uh, to touch your life. And the reciprocal is very true, too. Uh, you've touched our lives. You've touched my life. Uh, I remember coming back to another reunion, I think it was the 35th, and that was a great get together. So many, many happy memories, certainly. Uh, this evening, we've been here about the 60s, you know, the 60s, terrible times and so forth. And I, I may get the title wrong, and John can correct me, but there was a, uh, a song, I think. Uh, What's it all about, Alfie? Yeah. That's been sort of ringing through my head. You know, what's, what's it all about? Life, our lives. And you've probably heard this before, but it makes sense to me and I'll, I'll repeat it. I think what it's all about is faith, family, and friends. It's all very important. Uh, this group, this class of 68, uh, has hung together as a thick and thin. Uh, you mark the 50th. It's a great achievement. Congratulations. 
May God continue to bless all of you, your families, your friends. You are a, a wonderful class. And I think uh, whatever you did learn uh, at Fort Prep, I hope it's uh, seeped into your lives, uh, the way that you live, the way that you behave, the way that you relate to other people. And for those of you with children and grandchildren or other relatives, I think uh, it continues generation after generation. So I'm very grateful that you invited me back. Uh, it's been a great evening. God bless you. Let's keep each other uh, in our prayers uh, for one another. God bless. Good. Good. Damn, he's good. He's really good. And he's an 11 handicap, so don't let him uh, tell you anything different. Thank you, Father Dan. That was great. Perfect. So, in putting this agenda together, I kind of lobbied for the next speaker. I just felt it was absolutely essential that we bring back a memory. In the 60s, we heard some very memorable speeches. Vince Lombardi's Winners Never Quit, Quitters Never Win. JFK's Ask Not What Your Country Can Do For You, But What You Can Do For Your Country. And certainly Jack Sullivan's daily high-pitched scream, Look at the Latin! <laughs> but for me, one memorable speech from that era, given on a spring afternoon in 1967, sticks out in my mind. It was presented back in Collins Auditorium to a packed house of Prepsters, freshmen, junior, and seniors who could all vote. It was given by a 16-year-old junior football star who would go on to be elected the 1967 68 class president, ladies and gentlemen, Bobby Seal. Okay, Bob, see if you can get up here in the next half hour or so. Good evening, one and all. It's truly and I, I mean this from the bottom of my heart, it's truly just, a, it's a gift to be here tonight. Uh, I've never been to a reunion, and it's not that I haven't wanted to, it's just, it was one of those things, you live life, you live in different places, a reunion comes up, and, and, and I think one of the reasons why I never wanted to come to a reunion is because I never wanted to lose the feeling that I had about this school and about all the people that went here. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I remember my first day, you know, I, I, I came from Washington Heights. John Ragusso, Tim Horgan, and I we were in the same uh, Catholic grammar school, St. Elizabeth's. And when we came here, it was, I mean, it's totally different. Now, you, you're talking about your life from like, you know, zero to, you know, 14, 11 years old, and everything's the same. And you're taught by nuns and priests that tell you what you're going to think, okay, what you're going to do, what's going to send you to hell, don't eat meat on Friday. <laughs> well, I tell you, at 11 years old, I was like, eh. I ain't meeting Friday. I'm going to hell. What do I have? What do I have to worry about now? I mean, I'm sunk. So there I am, you know. But I mean, and again, I'm not getting on them, but I am because they were they were a pain in the ass, right? And then I come to this school. Now my brother graduated here in 50, 56, and I come to this school. And the main reason I came to uh, to the prep was I wanted to play football. You know, and it was the closest school to play football. And I heard it was a good school. Well, of course, the first day we walk in to use Hall, and I look around and I said, this is a goddamn school? You know, I mean, it was a tinderbox. You know, backwards from the ceilings, like you know, somebody was saying before. I said, what is this place? And then, then came, you know, Gene O'Brien, okay, and Father Shea. You know, who I got to admit, you know, as I look back now, I mean, 
Harry Potter should have been written back then, because those two could have been in the Harry Potter books, okay? O'Brien certainly would be he who would not be named, okay? Because I saw, you know, and I love Gene, but I saw Gene come flying down the stairs one day with his robes flailing, and he grabbed some kid and beat the hell out of him. And I said, I don't want to mess with that man, you know, like, yeah. So there was, there was Voldemort. <laughs> then we had Father Shea, who, again, he, he had to be Dumbledore because he, that man just appeared. He, he, I mean, he did. Think about it. You know, we'd be playing something, messing around, the, you know, messing around in the locker room. We'd be playing grab ass or something. That, you know, not really fighting, but jerking around. And all of a sudden, there he was. <laughs> Got a, got a locker, Sonny? <laughs> yes, Father. Well, you ain't got one now. Report to me at 3 o'clock. And then one day, when I was, when I was early on in freshman year, the, the best one was he was, we were, we were in the first floor, and Father Shea looked, and he looked at me, and he caught my eye, and I was like, oh, God, I'm in trouble now. And he gave me one of those. And I walked up to him, and I said, yes, Father? He says, Report to the mirror. Now there was one mirror down in the basement in the locker room. So I'm not gonna mess with this man because this man appears and disappears as he can. So I report to the mirror. I look in the mirror, I said something like, Mira, I'm reporting to you. <laughs> and I come back upstairs and say, Father, I reported to the mirror. So he looks at me again, he says, report to the mirror. <laughs> like now I'm in, the, I'm in the clutches of a psychopath here. <laughs> so I go back down to the mirror, I look in the mirror and I say, mirror, and I'm back again because this guy told me to come back. And uh, I went back up. And he looks at, I said, Father, I reported to the mirror. He looks at me, he says, Report to the mirror. Now I know I'm in an asylum because it's like I, I'm just and I go walking by and one of the, thank God one of the upperclassmen smacked me on the back and said your tie's crooked. <laughs> so I reported to the mirror, fixed my tie came up and said, Father, you know, now I'm proud of myself. I finally got it after three tries. Father, I reported to the mirror. He looked at me, he said, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> he walked away from me. Anyway, but those are my Harry Potter stories. Freshman year was, you know, freshman year was such a change because, you know, we came from a pattern at St. Elizabeth School, and what was amazing here, the one thing that always amazed me here was that the teachers, and, and I can name a lot of them, but the teachers here did not tell you what you were supposed to learn. They taught you and encouraged you to think that maybe it says this, but there's a possibility that there could be another meaning. That opened doors. That was that was truly remarkable because instead of reciting the Baltimore Catechism, you know, every day, all of a sudden, you know, this alleged mind, as I think Mr. Fox used to say, was was getting stimulated. I did very well in, in freshman year. The problem was sophomore year. <laughs> Everybody here is sophomoreitis, and it was a friend of mine, Mike Scully, and we went on a tear. You know, here we are, man. You know, we're now we're sophomores. We're hot stuff. Yeah, you know, we're gonna do whatever we want to do, and you know, we just know the we know the ropes, and here we go. Well, it was we were in Collins Auditorium, as a matter of fact, and word had gotten around that Scully and Seawar were both knuckleheads, right? and. They had, I'll never forget, they brought in a ballet troupe. And Scully and I are sitting in the back row and we're laughing our asses off at these guys' tights. 
you know, we're like, <laughs> and we didn't see the door open. And who was it? Just he who should not be named. <laughs> and he mentioned, he, he motioned to us. So anyway, we went outside. And uh, to make a long story short, he belted Scully. He belted me. He looked at Scully. He said, I thought I told you to get a haircut. He belted Scully again. And then he looked, he figured, and I hit him twice. I only hit him once. He wound up and he belted me. And he says, get out of here, you're both suspended. So we're walking out. And he says, wait, go to my office. So we went over to his office and Scully's saying, uh, Bob, I don't know, I don't know what's, uh, I said, look, Mike, I said, I'll tell you one thing. Now, I, I'm, and I'm not saying this is macho or stupid or anything. I just said, I mean, I just got hit hard twice in the face. And I just remember telling Scully, he's not going to hit me again. <laughs> Well, he brought us to the office, he said he apologized for hitting us, and he said, you two guys are morons. <laughs> and very simply, that if you don't stop what you're doing, if you don't stop being a-holes, because that's what we were doing, he says, you're going to be out. Well, at the end of the year, Scully and I, I, I put, it, put it this way, I knew, I said, I can't fail out of Fordham Ford Prep. I mean, because I really did love this place, and I knew if I failed out, my mother would have killed me. You know, she's probably the only one that scared me more than Father O'Brien. Uh, but we were given the ultimatum. I changed. I said, you know, I really, I realized, I, I said, I really am being a dope. And Scully did it. We both failed the chemistry exam by two points. Scully was told to leave, and I was given six weeks of summer school, which I took gladly, because I deserved it, you know? And that, something happened there, because then we came into junior year, and now junior year, you start getting into things. And I realized that, first of all, that my punishment certainly fit the crime, that I was, a, I was being a jerk, and that there were too many good people here to, not, to act like the way I was acting. And I really started to get into the school and to the people. All seniors are to pick up their souvenir hats in their goodie bags, they're back along the wall. One to a customer, I know you want to take them and then sell them out in the street, make a few bucks, <laughs> don't even think about it. Also, the prep bookstore is open, it's on the right hand side on the way out. It's there for all your Fordham Prep shopping needs. <laughs> Cocktails are served on the way out. Other classes are there, so behave yourselves. A thank you to Father Devron is in order for his work on the prep, and a special thanks to his development team. Some of them are here, they're running around, they're very busy, but Suzanne Dowden, John Murtaugh, Erin Trainer, and Ryan Fink for all their efforts and patience with the seven-person committee like herding cats. We would just, every Tuesday night we had a conference call. Three minutes of agenda and then 25 minutes of story. And I'm guilty for kind of pushing it in that direction, but, and speaking of Tuesday nights, thanks to the class reps for all their input, hard work, and support. Mike Albino, Carmine Lucia, Rich Ferrara, Bill Riley, Tony Williamson, and the host of our pregame cocktail party this afternoon, the owner of the only house in Scarsdale with a Fordham Road street sign at the end of his driveway, my man, George Dambetti. But seriously, when you shake hands and say goodnight tonight, don't forget to keep those plans you talked about here for the next time you meet. And finally, so the kids like we once were, and students like our speaker, Matthias, can attend the prep. Please fill out the pledge cards on the table or go to the prep page for the Class of 68 scholarship or stick a check in the mail to the prep development office. Whatever amount works for you, we're looking to get the 68% participation from the Class of 68, all of whose members turned 68 this year. That's good juju. You know what I mean? <laughs> a pledge or a donation will feel good. We promise you. Go in peace. The event that has ended, write a check. Good night. Everybody.